and we are live. Okay, so for my tool, I chose Book Wizard, and it is a scholastic.com website tool, and it's all about looking up for children's books. So you can search a children's book, or you can put in a book and look for similar books, or you can look for books based on students' reading levels, and they also have a featured author each I'm not sure how often, but they have a featured author that you can watch videos on. They also list new books in case you want to get some new books. And then up at the top of the website, they have a bunch of resources for us to teach with books. So they have different activities, different strategies, and you can also link books to Common Core Standards. So it's a really great site for integrating the use of children's literature into your classroom and for looking for books for certain students who may be above or below the rest of the reading levels in your class. Okay, so I went, um, question for you actually. There was, I, know I went on the website as well and there was like Lexile measure grade level and there was like guiding A to Z or something. Do you, I don't know how well you looked at it, but do you see like which one was more effective or do you think you'd like favor one over the other? Um, I like the, the guiding A to Z one, I think, that I liked more. Yeah, okay. I feel like if your school does Lexile testing, that would be really helpful for finding a book that's actually appropriate for that kid, for mm -hmm. that child. Because that way it's right on their level, or you can do slightly above their level to challenge them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right, any other I comments? think my favorite thing about the Scholastic.com is, you know, the book fairs that come in. And it's just great that you can kind of link, you know, the books that are available through the book fair to their online site. And that way, like, not only students and teachers can access this, but parents can kind of go on and then they can kind of read all about the books and, like, possible books that can come to their book fairs for their kids. So they can kind of have a heads up when these things are kind of coming around. So, like, you know, <laughs> they can reach out to their kids and just be like, hey, you know, instead of reading about, you know, the puppy dog, why don't you read about the science experiment? So it's really cool that Scholastic has so much stuff online that not only resources for the kids and teachers but also for the parents. <clears throat> yeah, this website families and parents could definitely use to look up similar books to some of their books their kids like and also if they want to try and do some activities with their kids based on their kids favorite book if it's a scholastic book then they could easily find stuff on here so it's good for website to send home to parents and let them know you know try this website out if you have time. Right, I think I think Lexile, I think that is the one that like they talk about like how mature it is, like like the topic, how like if like mm -hmm. a seven year old shouldn't be reading like Harry Potter or like Fifty Shades of Grey or something. So I think that's also <laughs> how that's the only one I, other one I could think of off the top of my head, like Twilight or something. The Lexile score, because we used to do them when I was in um, elementary school. You take a test and it just shows what like your vocabulary, how oh. like, how advanced your vocabulary is. So it goes off more of like what kind of words they use. Like, do they use big words or small words? Oh, it's and not it's about like how game. mature it is or like the ideas of it. I think there is a measure for that. I just don't. Oh, know. I, I don't. I, I, yeah. So I think that would be appropriate too. Like, so there are seven-year-olds not reading a really Fifty Shades of Grey book. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh goodness. <clears throat> okay. Is, is everyone good on that one? We can. Yeah. Move. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so my tool was Kahoot, and this website is an assessment tool where teachers and students, or pretty much anyone, parents can use it as well, where they just, they create their own questions, they get a pin number for their game, they give it to their students, they type in the answers, and in the classroom it can use, be obviously used in multiple ways. There could be warm-ups, so you can check for understanding to see what material needs to be retaught from the previous day. You can use it for an exit ticket for the same purpose, see, you know, what material you taught well and what needs to be, you know, reworked. But it can also be used for review games, so it's not always just, you know, question and answer. You can make it a competition, you know, who has the most points at the end, you know, gets extra credit or something. And I actually did a couple of the quizzes, and I figured I didn't know as, know as much as I thought I did because I didn't know any of the answers to the questions. But there's also, quite, like, quizzes about, you know, pop culture. If, for, those are more fun than educational, but, I mean... Any, you can go home and make them. Parents can make them. Like I said, it's pretty easy to use, and I think I, I really enjoyed the website. Yeah, I think that's another great one for parents and families to use because they could do that at home. With, you could even assign that as homework for kids, and they could do to that To create at home. their own quiz, right, right. Yeah. 
and again, it can be used like, you know, like you said, an assignment, but like again, if they're absent, you can send them the review game, you can send them a link, you yeah. know, here's a quick little pickup you need to make sure you know some of these things for the test or whatever. And it helps students, um, pick out, it helps them pick out the key information, like the key facts from their, their unit they need to know, so they're not just studying everything in the book. And again, it can be used across multiple grade levels, so like, I think even in high school you could use it, because again, it's a game, they want to earn extra credit for stuff, or, you know, it could be used in all grade levels, I would think. Yeah. So is there any way to like track what the students are doing through those quizzes? Like would they have, they have like a as a teacher, like if you have a sign it as a homework kind of thing, would you have like a parent over their shoulder who kind of, you know, writes down, you know, like okay, well question one through five, they got four out of five, right? Or like how would you review that like as a teacher? Well, I would see the homework as like creating their own quiz and like bring, like make the questions themselves and like bring, a, bring them in, like send me the link and then we could have some of them on the or instead of me doing the quiz, have them create their own like five questions or something, and then post it on you know Smartboard or something like that, and then do their quizzes for the rest of the class. Not really doing a quiz at home kind of thing for homework. More like them creating one themselves, and that also implements them using the technology to like with the whole tech standards thing, trying to incorporate technology into mm -hmm. their everyday lives. And do you know if you use ones that are pre-made, are they uh, like divided? In the categories for different right. subjects? Right, each, like, each like, they do have pre-made ones, and they are in different categories. So they'll have, like, science lesson on planets or something. So they have, the, like, which lesson they're doing it on. It's not just, like, big old general science. Or there'll be a math lesson on, well, not really so much. I guess there's some math, but not as many as, like, science or, like, social studies, where you can ask multiple choice, um, true, false. And something else you can do is, like, um, no, that's it. Actually, I lied. It's just true, false, multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> So I think you answer, is there a way to like track the... Yeah, it, com it comes to the teacher's device, whether, whether it's a computer or a phone or a tablet, and you'll like, um, it'll have the, you can do it in teams or like by individual students, so like their, their name will come up as like whatever, they, like, they have a nickname, so they can have like Johnny Q or like whatever they want to have their nickname be, and it'll come up with like, oh, this person got this many points, so now they're in first place, or so, and it also, like I said, it also comes back to the teacher's, the main, the teacher's device as well. So they can see who got which question right, and that can also help them with review, like scheduling, not scheduling, but like putting them in groups, like, so, oh, this person's really good at this skill, so they can help the other person with this skill, or in the unit. Very cool. Thanks. All right. All right, so I guess that makes me next. So <laughs> mine was the Universal Design for Learning Book Builder, and um, teachers can use this site to create, share, publish, and read digital books that engage and support individual needs, interests, and skills. Um, so the one cool thing about the Universal Design for Learning Book Builder is that it aids students in understanding the basic building blocks of like a story. So subject, characters, genre, audience, use of pictures, foreshadowing, vocabulary, kind of understanding what the author does and what the illustrator does. It also aids in comprehension, critical thinking, and um, motivate students to really express themselves creatively. And what a cool way to do that than through like publishing your own book online for free. And what I discovered is I went ahead and I made an account for myself because it was free. And once you register, it's through cast accounts, that's what it's called. You get the Universal Design for Learning Theory and Practice, Book Builder, Curriculum Self-Check, Exchange, journal and studio and like when you sign up it sends you all of the, the links for all of these helpful tools for you online and you can click on these links and you kind of can explore the book builder which is what I did personally and you can go on and you can create your own book so you're basically the author of your own imagination you go on you can cool. upload sketches so like if you wanted to sketch an illustration you can either scan it in or you take a picture of it upload it and you can design your whole book or if you want someone else to do it, you can email them, have them email you pictures. Or if you want to be just the illustrator and then be the author, it's completely up to your entire imagination. You can write about anything you want. And then you can just click the link, copy the link, and you can send it, and it's free. So anyone can read it for free. So basically, you're publishing your own children's book online with no cost. And it's really cool because teachers, students, children, college students, if they're bored, can go on and create these storybooks. <laughs> kind of like I did earlier. I think the one I did was like Helpful Haley or something like that. I did it on community service just to kind of see what 
went all into creating these books. And it was a really cool opportunity that I could see students doing. Because when I actually observed a kindergarten classroom, one of their biggest things was reading. They absolutely loved reading books. And they wanted to read me books, me read them books. And all I could think when I was going through this was if I could present this online technology to that classroom, they would eat this up. They would absolutely love the opportunity to write and illustrate and publish their own story because kids are so creative that they just want to reach out and they want to do this all the time. So this would be a great avenue to kind of reach that goal for them. I love how you said that you can get more than one person can be the illustrator and then another could be the author because I'm thinking I was just in a kindergarten class too and I'm thinking about having kids collaborate to make a book together and taking turns you know this time I'll be the illustrator and you'll be the author and then next time they'll they'll switch roles and I also liked about this website that they have on the home page it says UDL collections and it says it's a set of resources and lessons organized around a theme to support UDL practices and I know especially with early childhood themes are big so I thought that was really cool that you can look at things that are UDL that are lessons and stuff and all based around one theme so you could just go in there and see if the theme you want to do in your classroom is up and then find lessons that are UDL so I like that. Oh yeah that was a huge thing and it was like you could go on and you could see like model books that people have created through the UDL practices or there's also public library books that you can go on kind of like what you had which was the bookshare you mm -hmm. can kind of go on and you click that and you're able to get previews and then the cool thing about the stories is you can add little animals at the bottom and they're helpful tip animals when you click on it it's like this one kind of looks like a lizard and he kind of gives you details about the characters like if you go through the book and you're like oh wait who's that Haley character again if you click on the lizard he'll tell you all about the characters that are on that Whoa. page That's and great. then yeah there's different That's ones so and awesome. you can you can set it to what you want and then on the right hand corner of the page I clicked this one it was a lizard about a gecko it was a story about a gecko it was a lizard about a gecko it was a story about a gecko <laughs> and um on the side, it was extension activities. So on that page, it was like, the they gecko like is hungry, food. he wants more food. So then it was like extension activity, time to foreshadow. What do you think will happen to Gary the gecko? And it was like, it had all of these activities on the side of it that teachers could reach out and use. All this while that you can press play and it will read to you. So it's, it's like an really interactive cool. book. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just list having the kids listen to the book and like being like, okay, this is boring. But they're actually, I don't say like have to pay attention, but like you know, they have to know what's going on in the story to do these extension activities or. Oh yeah. I feel like this is like a really great motivator for students who don't like to read or write. Like if yeah. they don't oh, publish right. it, if they, could, if they have the option to do their own book, make a really good story. And then right. like kids that don't like to read, it's interactive. They would love that. They would actually get read to, and they would actually be able to do things with the reading. It's not just sitting there reading a book. I feel like that would be yeah. something that normally wouldn't get into that. Especially well, because I am not a big reader myself. So, like, when I went on there and I was like, oh, if I press this little animal, he's going to tell me, like, all about the background information about this character. That was really cool. And I could see myself, like, as a kid going through and be like, oh, so Gary the giraffe is going to tell me what's happening next? Like, oh, I'll click on Gary. It was really cool to see, like, the interaction that you could have. Yeah, and I like it. It's like little kids reading other people's books that they've written is one thing, but if you know a student in your class wrote a book, then of course you're going to want to read what every other student's written in your class. Totally agree. Oh, yeah. So it sounds pretty easy to use. I mean, if kids can use it. I think that's another plus with like not just her tool, but I think all of ours once we get to the other two people who have to talk about it. They, they're all pretty easy to use. Like They're kid-friendly, adult-friendly, so I feel like they're all pretty beneficial in different ways, obviously, but I mean, yeah. they're all kid-friendly, so... All right, well, um, the fourth tool that um, I want to talk about is Thinkport, which was, um, did I even say that right? <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 you did. <laughs> Just making sure. Um, it was targeted toward Maryland educators, which I thought was nice for people teaching in the state because it uh, really helps with the Maryland curriculum. It's really targeted at what we have to teach in Maryland. Um, and the nice thing about it was it does have like real world resources. It has lots of simulations and lots of other things that connect to like games and things that are engaging for students, but that connect to the wider world outside of the classroom. It talks about the Maryland environment and um, the different things that you can do at the Chesapeake Bay. There was like a simulation that I tried. It was really it was actually fun and engaging. 
not like a lot of the games where they just mm-hmm. take a quiz and pretend it's fun, but it's really not. This one was actually fun. So, um, and then it also does have a parents link, which is really nice because you can actually send that link to the parents, and they could do activities with their children that um, are relevant to what you're actually doing in the classroom. So are there like any less, I don't want to say lesson plans available, do they have like examples, like other than the simulations and the, um, what are yeah. the other things? Yeah, they do have lesson plans available in like PDF form that you can download and um, mm-hmm. a lot of them go along with the simulations. That they're oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this so one thing that I really like from the ThinkPort was um, they have a Think Family and Community thing at the top, and if you went to go and you click on that, it has like online field trips that you can click on, which is really cool because you get to apply like the lessons to everyday life and I think that's super important to keep students engaged nowadays because now they're just like, you know, with technology, I can go do that online on YouTube. Like I don't really want to sit in a classroom and hear you talk about it. So having those is really nice. But then my favorite is the community calendar. If you click on that, it has links to what's going on in Maryland as a whole that you can connect to that you can connect to all of your lessons that you're doing. Like you can do a field trip to right now, tomorrow at 10 a.m. there's a family fun day at Towson Town Center. Like if you click on that, you can go there and you can check out, like you can do history facts about Towson in the Town Center. Or like there's other, there's Mother Goose on the loose. There's all these different things around Maryland that's going on that you could connect to your lessons, which is really cool. And it keeps your kids involved in the community as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The other thing that we... What? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll just say I like how just like the Kahoot, where you're getting the family involved, getting the parents or guardians mm-hmm. or their care of getting them involved with it as well, and not just stopping inside the class once they leave the classroom. Right. Again, I think with all of these, they are bringing technology, like and education outside, like with the field trips. That's them learning, but it's not in the classroom. It's you know extra work, but they don't feel like it's extra work. I guess it's that's right. Nice. Yeah, have lots of good teacher resources. Um, one of the things they had was like a guide for new teachers, which is really helpful, obviously, in oh, yeah. our situation here. So it <laughs> helps, yeah. It really helps you with like um, a guide to like classroom management and stuff like that. And then it That's does really have good. professional development opportunities and links to different professional development like in classes Maryland. and stuff? Like, so, like classes yeah. you can take or something like that? or classes, online webinars, stuff like that. Gotcha. Yes, webinars and stuff. And I think this website, too, if you're teaching in Maryland, is really good for project-based approach learning because if, say, your class decided they wanted to do a project on something on Assateague or something in the Chesapeake Bay, then you could do uh, virtual field trips before you do your actual field trip because that's always involved in the project-based learning. So it's, it's a good site, especially for social studies, too. And I love that this website really focuses on STEM you know, which is the science, technology, engineering, and math, which is a huge part of, like, just nationally-based learning, things that we're kind of going towards more and more nowadays because of the technology and the engineering end of things. We're in such demand to have, like, people who work in those fields that I love that this is pushing the STEM activities and then the lesson plans, the STEM collaboratives. That's the word I'm looking for. And it really does give them real-world skills, like a lot of the simulations and stuff. It teaches the things that they're going to need to know in the real world, which is really important, too. Yeah. All right, I think we're ready for our last tool. Woo-hoo. All right, All right. we got the last one. It's uh, Newsla, News, ELA. Uh, it was developed in 2013. Uh, it's a website that takes uh, news that's going on around the world and offers five different levels of complexity for different readers throughout the school and classroom. Uh, it goes from grades 3 to 12th, or 3rd to 12th, sorry. Um, also, along with each of these articles, they have uh, Common Core line quizzes attached to them. So that way, I mean, if you didn't want to come up with your own quizzes or anything to go along with it, they have those ready for you. Um, it's really useful in any, I guess, any, any grade level because going to have students in each grade level that aren't going to be able to read as well as others and others that are a little bit more advanced and rather than trying to give the advanced students something that's not as well written you can still give them uh, you know a higher level uh, a harder level of reading while you're still giving somebody else in the classroom the same thing but at their level but with all the same facts and information that the other students are getting out of it it's just a little more for 
certain students to read as opposed to the other ones. Yeah, I really like the um, kids feature on that website. If you go to the kids tab, it shows you news stories around the world that relate to kids, like somewhere about in Pakistan, in France, and then here, and they were all over. And I think that those pieces would be really good to show to kids during your writing section in your class and have them do opinion writing on the news stories. So. I'm just saying, I wish I knew about this website when I was like in the eighth grade current events political issues class because mm -hmm. I'm just, these articles are well written and they're not like biased written. They're very informative and then that they do have the quizzes so you could kind of go through those and get those ideas for yourself when writing like the papers or that review and it's like I love that they spread them out like they have a specific one for war and peace. Like mm -hmm. you don't see too yeah. many news friendly, kid friendly sites that are dedicated just to war and peace. Like that's a huge one. That's very yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> it's like very interesting. Trying to make them better citizens, I guess, like trying to teach them, you know, it's yeah. kind of bad to like. Yeah. And they're easy well, reading like, for students right. instead I think of that's being too definitely, overwhelming. Definitely well, beneficial. Coming from like a military family, it's so like humbling to see that they're actually engaging students in what's going on around the world. It's not all, you know, butterflies and roses sometimes. <laughs> you know, we've got to stand it's up really, for what we've there's real, yeah, there's real issues in the class who are in military families, and I'm sure that they that would make them feel important. And like whoever, whatever family member is over at war, it would probably make them happy to know that everyone is understanding why and talking about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I can't find it right now. I'm like looking through trying to find it again. But when I did go on there and um, look at it, they have different collections based on like. Uh, a holiday that's going on, like uh, so, like Women's History Month, they'll do news articles about, um, women, you know, important women today and important women in the field of STEM and stuff like that. Um, I did see one about um, being black in Baltimore uh, right around the time those riots were going Whoa. on to the students, but it made it student friendly, which is really nice. Right. So it's not with all like the gore and the violence. They, there is violence, but they're saying it in a nice way, so it's not so like they're saying it in a yeah. way that makes sense to students. Right but still connects them to the real world issues. And again, making them culturally aware of their surroundings. Not just here, but it's important to like know what's, like, like Amy was saying, around the world, like you know, in Pakistan or you know, globally. Not just, oh, I live here, let me just figure out what's going on here, but knowing what's going, around, going on in the world. Yeah, it just connects yeah. them to the world and like, makes them global citizens. Right. And without well, giving and them it a three makes page them nationally article. competitive. <laughs> yep. And Paxton, you what did you say? Them. I'd say you don't have to give them like a long three-page article. I mean, once they open that up, they'll just get overwhelmed by seeing how much they have to read right there. Yeah. You can go ahead and hit the, I think it's like the 420 version, and it sums it up in the smaller paragraphs for them, Doesn't, but still leaves in all the important information. Right. I think that's really important, too. Like, those articles are really just giving them important facts, so it's helping them pick out when they're not just reading these articles, but just in general, like, what you should be looking for, who, what are key facts you need to know, like, in regular reading, not just in newspapers or magazines, but in yeah. real situations, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I just love that there are articles that kids will want to, like, you have serious ones about the 2011 tsunami or Oysters the New Dream, but the one right next to it is Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Girls, dresses, legs, pillows, backpacks, crews, phew, that's the title line. <laughs> Like, I just love how kid-friendly this is because, you know, it kind of, like, mixes in those super serious articles with things that they'll want to read. So, you know, they'll click on that Frozen one first and they'll be like, oh, well, 2011 Tsunami, hmm, maybe I'll also that. freeze that over too? Like, I'll read that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a also, really sweet site. It's also nice because it's not biased. So you don't have yeah. to, you know, talk you don't have to worry about, that. about biased news sources, but you don't have to worry about it with this site. Mm, this one just gives you the yeah, information. That's what I was saying earlier. And this is free, right? I'm assuming like anyone can oh, just yeah. log on and do it. Yep. And so yep. if kids are bored, if they're really that bored and they want to read something, they could just, you know, if their teacher gave them the website, oh, let me go find something fun to read. If they don't have, like, I mean, obviously they have access to the internet and stuff. But I mean, yeah. it's just you some... don't even have to really sign on. Honestly, if you just go to the Newsilla site, you can just go click, and there's five tabs or six tabs at the top. You click on them, and you scroll through, and then it's like they've got science, they've got money, kids, law, health, art, peace, sports. 
<laughs> yeah, money's very important. I mean, nothing <laughs> like teaching our kids about money through Elsa. Um, <laughs> that's where the Elsa will come, guys, through the money collection. Really but, funny. yeah, it's really cool because, I mean, I guess if you sign in, that's where you see the quizzes and stuff. But mm -hmm. just the online site, you don't have to sign in to read the articles, which is really cool because not mm -hmm. too many people want a million newsletters in their email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is anyone making... I was like, does anyone make like last statements before we actually finish? Like, anyone want to say like one last thing or? All of our tools are great resources for us in our classrooms. And yeah. And talk. No, Technology is not going anywhere, so I think, and it's not really hard to find tools either. I think you just have to put the effort in to find them. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, so many oh, them out there. It's hard to not have one. Right. I just love that all of these tools are actually free tools online that anybody can have access to. Right. They're not like teacher specific, which we've seen in the past where you have to have, you know, like a website URL through your school or through like whatever you're teaching through whatever curricul curriculum you're teaching through. You don't have specific guidelines. You can actually go online to these as just like a regular American citizen or whoever out of the country if you want. <laughs> Click on these things and it's just like free avenues for education, which is really cool because too many kids are searching the internet trying to find links for things like for projects or for just like regular classroom work that maybe something they don't understand so they Google it. Well, if they stumble across some of these sites, they're great avenues for them to have. Right. One-stop yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah. One-stop shop, exactly. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank they're you. also really great because they all connect to what you would actually be doing in the classroom. Right. It's, it's technology for technology's sake. It's actually relevant to whatever you would be talking about in the classroom, and it's relevant to the kids that would be using these sites, too. True. Well, good talk. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful Learning. talk, everyone. Yep. I feel like I okay. should do it. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Till next time. Two, one. Bye. Bye.